Uh, my name is Azur Prali, and um, this section I'll cover about the training and fine tuning of queries. So thank you to Alreza and Shayan for both covering uh, LST, um, the transform inertia models. Okay, so uh, first I need to talk about what the pre-training inputs and outputs of BERT is. So um, as an input, we have, let's say, a set of two sentences, uh, as you can see in here, which is in this case, mass sentence A and mass sentence B. So uh, these are the, uh, these two sentences has some words that are being masked and each token is a word that basically converts each of these words into embeddings um, using pre-trained embeddings. So as you can see in here, we have uh, our, our input as two sentences and then we convert them basically to an embeddings and then that's the input to uh, BERT. And in the output, we have a, basically a C uh, binary value, which is the output for the next sentence prediction. When the case of uh, next sentence, it would be one uh, if sentence B follows sentence A, or it would be zero if sentence B actually doesn't follow sentence A. And these are basically, um, each of these word vectors correspond to the outputs of the language model problem. Um, so the number of word vectors that we input is the same as the number of word vectors that we output. Uh, so, before, uh, so the, as, as I mentioned, we, uh, we take the sentences uh, as our input and then we convert them to embeddings. But uh, how do we do that? Uh, we actually, this is a three-step uh, basically process. So the initial embeddings are constructed from three vectors. As you can see in here, token embeddings, segment embeddings, and position embeddings. So let's say this is our, uh, this is our input right here. And as you can see, you can see some talk, uh, some uh, the words in a sentence are being tokenized. So uh, we have this special character called CLS and SEP. So basically CLS uh, uh, tells us this is the beginning of our input sentence. And whenever our uh, sentences finishes, so in this case, we have two sentences, we use the uh, SEP uh, token. So basically at the end of each sentence, we use this uh, SEP right here. Uh, similar situation in here as well. So um, as you notice that we have, this sentence is basically my dog is cute and the second sentence is he likes playing. But as you notice this right here, uh, that's because um, the, the, um, the sentences, the words that are being embedded, uh, BERT uses uh, pre-trained embeddings that is mentioned in the paper. They, they use the word piece for word piece embeddings with a vocabulary of 30,000 tokens. So a uh, BERT vocabulary is uh, fixed with the size of 30,000 tokens. So for example, um, play is a part of their vocabulary, but ING is uh, shown like this. And uh, basically the tokenizer, to tokenizer that takes the input sentence, decides whether uh, we'll decide to keep every word as a whole word or split into subwords with special representation of first subword and subsequent subword. So the symbol in here, this symbol right here, uh, is, is, an, is an example of what I'm explaining here. So the, that's the token embeddings, basically. Now, uh, these two, which is the segment embedding and position embeddings, these are basically um, used for the positioning of embeddings. So usually in the language models, we need to know that. So segment embeddings indicates the, se the sentence number that is encoded into a vector. So BERT is trained on, uh, on that criteria and expect, expects sentence pair. So using ones and zeros, we distinguish the two sentences. So for example, um, as you know that we have two sentences, E A to E, uh, this part from, from here to here is for sentence A and from here to here is for sentence B. And also we have the position embedding. So in the position embeddings, we actually uh, want to know the position of each word within each word is within that sentence, which is encoded. So it starts from zero and goes to 10, which makes sense based on what we have here. At any point, you guys, if you have any questions, please stop me, I can explain it better, okay? Uh, I have one question. Yeah. Uh, you said that like we just have 3,000 something words. What if the yeah. race outside this uh, carpet Oh, so uh, similar situation that I hear, said here. So for example, play is a part of their uh, vocabulary, but playing is not. So that is separated with the special character of this right here. Okay, so basically just 
give the hash if it is outside the vocabulary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Just stop me at any point. Okay. Now regarding, uh, so that was our input. So uh, now regarding the training and fine tuning, which is the interesting part of BERT. Um, so basically uh, training of BERT is done in two phases, pre-training and fine tuning. So most complex uh, basic computation is done in the pre-training of uh, BERT. So in that part, basically the model understands what is language and what is context. And in the fine tuning, the purpose is just to uh, basically teach the model so it could solve an, a specific problem. So um, for now, let's go into more uh, depth for both steps. First, I'm going to focus on the pre-training. So what is pre-training? Uh, what is the goal in the pre-training is basically uh, making Bert learn how, what is language and what is context. And it is divided into two unsupervised tasks, uh, which is uh, the next sentence prediction task and mask language model uh, modeling task, as you can see here. So basically, these are uh, two unsupervised tasks that BERT needs to train on uh, simultaneously in order to understand what is language and what is context. Now, about the mask language model that I will explain first, we need to know in terms of bidirectional language model, how is that useful in this situation? So usually uh, in the language models, in other language models that are left to right and right to left, the masking is being done at the end of the sentence. So for example, this is a, uh, an example of this sentence is saying, the champion of World Cup 2020 was France national team. So, uh, I, I made a mistake, World Cup 2020, <laughs> we had World Cup in 2018 actually. So the champion of World Cup 2018 was France national team, for example, and the masking is being done at the end. Um, but in the right to left situation, the first word uh, of the sentence is being masked. So what, what do we mean by mask? So basically the task uh, in the, basically we want to uh, predict the word that is being masked in future. So we would replace the word with a mask and basically we want to predict that word and see if we train our model based on that so we could understand what to uh, predict in future. So instead of the word, uh, instead of mask, we want to predict the word actually that is in that sentence. So in a bidirectional model, uh, we could choose these words at any random uh, part of the sentence. So for example, as you can see in here, uh, the champion champion word was replaced with mask and national team team word was replaced with another mask. So basically BERT's masks in their intermediate tokens in the sequence for the prediction task, making the name of bidirectional encoding as I mentioned. Again, any questions, please feel free to stop. So about the masking strategy in the in this part. Uh, this is really important. Uh, so basically BERT doesn't uh, mask the words all the time. So first of all, before feeding word sequences into BERT, 15% of the words in each sequence are replaced with a mask token. So basically this is the strategy used in BERT to pre-process the massive unlabeled text data, data set for the self-supervised uh, bidirectional context mask uh, prediction task. So basically uh, out of that 15%, uh, so out of this 15%, 80% uh, of the time, we replace the word uh, with mass token. But 10% of the time, tokens are replaced with a random token. So for example, in the previous example that we had, uh, the champion of World Cup 2018 was the France national team. It could be the, uh, the winner, the loser of World Cup. So it's, it, it is replaced with a random token. But 10% of the time, tokens are left unchanged. Now, the mask words are not always replaced with the mask token mask because uh, the mask tokens would never be seen before fine tuning if we want to replace it all the time with mask tokens. And the model attempts to predict the original value of the mask words, as I mentioned. And what I need to also mention here is the loss function considers the prediction of the mask tokens and ignores the prediction of the non-mask ones. Now, that was the first part, which was the mass language model. About the next sentence prediction, which is the second task, part of the pre-training, uh, basically the whole uh, part. So in this task, uh, basically we're making a binary decision whether sentence B follows sentence A. So whether, let's say this is our second sentence, he bought mask and eggs 
uh, and whether this sentence is following the first sentence. So that's the purpose in next sentence prediction. And we're making a binary decision. So Bert takes two sentences, uh, two sentences and it determines if the second sentence actually follows the first sentence. Now, this helps Bert to understand context uh, across different sentences. And the model is uh, trained with bo both uh, mass language modeling and next sentence prediction together to minimize the combined loss function of the two strategies. Uh, so uh, I, I'm pretty sure I, I explained this, uh, the CLS and SEP token, what they are and what they indicate. Now we need, we know that this is the second sentence that we have. So if sentence, uh, sentence B follows sentence A, we have this label, which is is next. Now um, to predict if the second sentence is connected to the first one, the complete input sequence goes through the transformer base model and the output of the CLS token is transformed in a, in a two by one shaped uh, vector using a simple classification layer. So the next label is next label uh, assigned is assigned to this situation and uh, this is done by using softmax. Now in this case, which is right here, as you can see, these two sentences are not related. So this is our sentence A and this is our sentence B, right? First sentence is saying the man went to the, let's say grocery store. And then the second sentence is saying Tom Hanks won, let's say leading actor award in Oscars. These two sentences are not related in a way, in, in no way, unless, I don't know, it's, it doesn't make sense if they're not connected. So that's why we have the label not next in here. Now, that was about the pre-training part, about the fine-tuning. So fine-tuning is relatively a uh, straightforward task. And basically we want to see how we could actually fine-tune BERT to uh, accomplish a, a specific task. So for example, let's say classification task, question answering task, or name entity recognition. Now, uh, in the, these following tasks could be done by doing small adjustments to BERT. Uh, which I will cover in more details in the, in the next slide for a question answering uh, task. But for, let's say for question classification tasks, such as sentiment analysis, uh, we do this similarly to next sentence prediction, the next sentence classification. So by adding a classification layer on top of the transformer output of the CLS token, this could be accomplished. Now for question answering task, in more details about the fine tuning of BERT. Now, as we know, question answering is a prediction task. So given a question and a context paragraph, we want to see what part, which part of that paragraph has the answer to our question. Now, um, so this is our input question, and this could be uh, the first sentence, for example, that is fed into BERT. As you remember, this was our, this could be our first sentence. And we could have the paragraph that is fed, fed to BERT as our second sentence. So the question is fed into BERT and then paragraph is fed into BERT again also. And the goal is to basically output the answer, which is within a cloud. And which part of the paragraph has the answer to our question? So our question in here is where do water droplets collide with ice crystals to form pr uh, precipitation? And we have this input paragraph right here. But actually in that paragraph, this is the answer to our question right here. So um, basically there are only two new parameters learned during the fine tuning, which is the start vector and uh, an, an end vector with size equal to hidden shape size. So probability of token I uh, being the start of the answer is computed as uh, using a softmax. So uh, in the softmax, let's say softmax SK, uh, S could be the start vector and K could be the final transformer output of token I. So this is done at this point. So QA model could be trained by learning basically two extra vectors that marks the beginning and end of our answer. Again, any point if you have any questions, feel free to stop me. Now, this is a, just an illustration of uh, how this task is being done in, on squad data set, which is the Stanford question answering data set. So this is the whole uh, paragraph that we have in here. It has a lot of content in it. And the question was who normally su supervises a construction job? Now, as you can see, it actually did that job that I explained. So it marked the beginning and the uh, ending of the answer to our question. And the answer is actually a construction manager, design engineer, and construction engineer project manager.
Now, uh, why BERT is a game changer in NLP? That's really important. So, as I explained, BERT is bidirectional. So, for example, in the masking that we explained, it's it, this is really this is really uh, useful, and uh, it combines two tasks for the in in its pre-training uh, stage, which is the mask language model and next sentence prediction. And so far, it's the best method in NLP because it can it could understand context-heavy text. So that's why it's uh, one of the, it's a really game changer in uh, natural language processing, but it has its own limitations. So BERT could only uh, handle long text sequence, but uh, the tokens that it could support, support is up to 512 tokens. So it only supports up to two, 512 tokens. And it could, the computational resources that it needs to train and find uh, mostly in training, it could become costly, as also Alerza mentioned in his uh, basically presentation for uh, these uh, basically area of models.